and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Oliver Draper, CTO for COP. And what we're going to look at today is how to trigger an accurate intrusion detection box on a Height Vision IP camera. Okay, so we're going to log into a Height Vision IP camera now uh, to set up our intrusion detection box. I'm just going to log in with the details that I've already predefined uh, on this camera. So I've already activated by giving it a password. I've already given it an IP address as well. Uh, so there's our camera currently at the moment. Um, what I need to do to uh, configure an intrusion detection area is just click configuration at the top and that will put us into the settings of the camera. Uh, on the left hand side for this intrusion detection it's found under event on the left hand side and then it's under smart event. So when I go to smart event I've got uh, some set of smart events for this camera. The one we're going to today is intrusion detection. So for intrusion detection, uh, so, so I want to get into this area here, uh, I do need to be mindful of my uh, uh, installation of where the camera is actually pointed and angled to and also the size of my targets as well uh, and where I'm going to be placing these boxes. So to put an intrusion box in there I simply click detection area and then using simple clicks in the mouse click 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 it around in whatever sort of shape I want to and then once I've done that because you can see as I've still let go it's still got there I just right click the mouse once and there we go that's put that shape in place. I can now save that shape. So, once I've done this, as you can see below there, I have my target detection. Is it human, vehicle, or both? Which one do I want it to actually be? I'm going to go for human detection for today. And it's doing these human detection based off these simple shapes of head, body, arms, or legs, and so forth. Now, we can get occasional false alarms based off these simple shapes. There might be animals or other objects in the scene, which if they're walking straight on towards the camera, it sees a head, it sees a body, it sees two legs, it might think that to be a person. So you can get the occasional false alarm. What we can do is we can use our minimum and maximum size uh, box areas here. So I can say and draw a little box, anything smaller than that do not trigger. And then I can use the same for maximum size and say anything bigger than this box do not trigger. And that can help me reduce these false alarms. Uh, even though it is going up these shapes, I know if a cat walks down here, it is going to be smaller than that box there. Therefore, that shouldn't trigger the event. Now, with intrusion detection, how does this work? Well, it's looking for this object, of course, being inside that box, but it's all about loitering. So it's not an actual region entrance in detection. It's about a loitering target within inside that box. So I'll set a human target loitering inside there. Now I have an option here for threshold. The threshold determines how long the object lights in the box before it triggers. So by default it's set to zero seconds. Meaning as soon as it's a person with inside that box, it's going to trigger uh, this rule. However, I can set this to say five seconds. So if I set that to five seconds now, that means if something comes into this box, or a person should I say comes into this box, and then leaves it before that five seconds has, has, has happened, it won't trigger the alarm. However, once the target has lightened that box for more than five seconds, that's when it will trigger the alert. Because you might be happy with passers-by going to and from this area, and you're not really bothered. But the moment they start lighting around that area, that is when you're interested. It might be, let's take a typical scenario. Uh, you've got a camera outside your house, uh, and your car is parked on the road outside, and you've got a camera looking over your car. But there is a public footpath going between your house and the car. Now, people are going to walk past on a, on a daily basis. What you don't want is the camera to be triggering these alerts for someone just walking past because, you know, at the end of the day, they're going to walk past. It's not of interest. However, what if someone starts loitering around your car? This is where you can put an intrusion detection box in there and then set the threshold time to, say, five seconds. could be seven seconds. It could all the way up to ten seconds if you really wanted to. So anyone loitering their car for more than ten seconds that is when you're going to get the alert because that's when you're interested. However, someone just walking past, again, you can judge the timing. Should have gone past within a five, six seconds over then. You should usually watch the footage to try and determine, obviously, how long it takes someone to walk past. So we've set that on there then. We've got the sensitivity, so how much the object actually goes in the area before it starts actually uh, counting that loitering time. So again, 50% means half of the body goes across that line before it starts triggering, or I can actually increase it. So I've increased sensitivity to say on 90%, it needs at least 10% of the object to go into that box area before it starts actually uh, doing that countdown time of five seconds. However, by default, it's set to 50, meaning at least half of the object should be in that area before it starts triggering it. And then we've got the target validity. So even though it's doing these checks off these shapes of human and you've got your minimum max size boxes, 
This is all to do with how many checks that the system's doing to ensure that it's definitely a person or a vehicle, so it's using an AI technology. If I increase it, it means it's going to do the most amount of checks to determine that it's definitely a human body shape before it even starts trying to do that five down countdown of that person loitering in that scene. So I'm just going to enable that uh, uh, box at the top there and click save. And then what I'll get when we go to live in a moment is I'll get a blue box and you might just be able to see it on the camera there, but behind the yellow line now it has put a blue box on there. Now with intrude detection, if you wanted to, you could put the box right up against the edge of the scene because it's not an entering and leaving or a line crossing where it has the entire object. Don't forget what intrusion detection is doing. It's seeing a loitering target. So the moment it sees a target inside that box area, that's when it will start counting that target. It's about a loitering time. So there's no sort of entering or exiting. However, what we do need to bear in mind, there is no direction of travel with intrusion detection. I'm in schedule, when do I want it to be in effect? In this case, I put it to 24 seven. I'm happy with that. And my linkage method, uh, what do I want the camera to do when the event is triggered? It can send an email. So it has to send an email to an email address with some attached pictures. You do have to configure the email settings on the camera in order for that to work. Notify Surveillance Center, that's notifying the Hit Connect app. That's the mobile app for the end user to get their uh, playback and their footage and their alarm notifications on the mobile phone. That has to be ticked. If you don't tick that, they will not get any notification. Upload a file, uh, an image to the actual memory card on the camera if you've got one. Um, flash the light on the camera. So this camera has got the live guard feature, that flashing strobe light and audio alarm. So I want to flash the light and sound an audio warning out of the camera. The camera also has the facility of an alarm output, so that can trigger to floodlights or any other sort of uh, setting on there. It's just a simple dry contact switch, essentially, and also trigger recording. So I've saved that now. However, I have got my flashing alarm and audio warning. So to tweak the settings for flashing light and audio warning, I go to basic event. At the top there, go to flashing alarm output. How long do I want the light to flash for? I can say flash that for 15 seconds and the frequency low, medium or high, or just to stay static on. But I'm going to have a high frequency flash. And then I can set a schedule to when that light is in effect. So I want the light to flash all the time. It might well be that I've got the intrusion box set to be triggering all the time, but I only want the light to flash on the camera at a certain time of day. Same thing for the audio alarm. When do I want the audio alarm to be in effect? And at the top here, what do I want the audio phrase to be? So I've got the option for siren, warning restricted area, no parking zone, and so forth. I can just put, welcome, please notice the area is under surveillance. How many times do I want to repeat it? And what the volume to be? And I'm going to set that to 100. And then click save. So now if I go to my live view, we will see that blue box there on the scene. Fantastic. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to trigger this intrusion box and let's just see what happens. So as we saw there, uh, when I first entered the box, I got the green bounding box around me to show that I identified a target. Uh, but the rest of the target stayed blue, as in the line stayed blue and I stayed green. It didn't actually trigger anything immediately. Only once I started to walk towards the edge of the box, I've been in there more than five seconds, and that's when it turned red and triggered the result because, as far as it was concerned, my object had loitered in that box for more than five seconds. So there we go. Hopefully you found that useful. Uh, as always, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Obviously hit that like button. Also press that bell icon. That way you'll be alerted when we upload any new videos.